So in this video, let's talk a little bit about portrait mode. Now, this is one of my favorite techniques to use whenever I'm shooting people, but also other subjects as well, because it falls perfectly in line with what we're trying to do in the editing process. Identify our subject and then make it stand out. And there's two main ways that we're gonna do this. One, by identifying our subject and adding more light to it. That's how we bring attention to our subject. We literally point light to where we want our viewer to look. Then also, what's not our subject, we throw out of focus. And anytime we throw something out of focus, immediately your eyes just won't go to it anymore. There's no detail there. And that's exactly what portrait mode does. And it's very effective when we use it properly. So take a look at this image on the screen. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. This is the before and this is the after. So let me show you how we actually do this. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is on the top left hand side of this image, you see the word portrait. This is how we know that we're in portrait mode. I'm gonna click on the word edit and you're gonna notice immediately we have a few more options on the top left hand side of the frame than we typically would if this was not a portrait mode photo. Now the first one in yellow is where I would start. If I turn this on and off simply by tapping it, you'll see the difference that this makes. Now, why is this important? Well, if you shot a photo in portrait mode, and let's say it was too shallow of a depth of field, part of that subject was in focus, but not all of that subject. Or let's say you just don't like that effect at all. Well, you can simply turn this off, and that will take all of your portrait mode photos and turn them into just a regular photo. It brings back into focus anything that would have been thrown out of focus that you didn't necessarily want. Now, in this scenario, I do want that background to be thrown out of focus. So I'll turn that back on. Now the next option, immediately to the left of that, where you see that F4.5, that's how we can control this depth of field. And what that means is, how much of that out of focus background do we want to be out of focus? If we click on that number, we're gonna see a slider that now appears on the bottom of the frame. Now if I drag that slider, watch what happens. I'll drag this all the way to the right, and it's bringing back into focus that background that it threw out of focus. Now, as I drag this to the left, it increasingly throws that background out of focus. So for this example, I'm gonna keep this at f1.4, basically my maximum aperture or shallow depth of field effect, because I like what it's doing to the scene. It's completely blurring the background and keeping our focus on our subject in the process. So our next option that we get to control, if I click on this hexagon icon on the top left here, this gives me options to change the portrait lighting effects. So if we look at the bottom of the screen here, we're gonna see a slider that we can choose these different portrait mode effects. The first one is our standard. Now if I go to the next one here, we have studio light. That's just gonna give us a little bit more light on our subject. Now for me, I think that goes a little bit too far, but here's the thing. Just like other adjustments we've made previously, we have a slider at the bottom. I can always drag that slider to the left and just bring it down a little bit. Now let's keep on moving. Let's go to the next option here. This is contour light. Now this works a little bit differently because now it's gonna create a pattern of light that's gonna more sculpt the face. Almost if it's in a 3D environment or in a studio. Exactly how my face probably looks right now. We have highlights on one side and you're gonna see shadows falling off on the other. Now if we look at this photo, it's exactly what's happening here. Specifically, I wanna point your attention to under her chin. Look at the previous example of studio light, and now I'll switch back to contour light. You see what it's doing? It's actually giving us shadowing, and that's a great way to think about it. Not necessarily lighting, but shadowing, because all of lighting really comes down to where do the shadows fall. This is actually creating realistic shadows as if it was lit in the field this way. This is really cool. Now, let's keep on moving on. Here we have stage light. So what stage light is gonna do, this just completely eliminates the distracting background, we're just turning it black. And it really does have such an impact when it does that. And again, you can drag the slider to move the amount of light that you want and bring that back down so it's a little bit more natural. Let's move on to the next one here. We have stage light mono, which is the same as before, except it just turns it into a black and white image. And this last example here, high key, this is such a cool effect. You can immediately cut that person out of a background, turn it into a black and white image, and what you're left with is a photo that completely removes any distractions and just gives you a really clean portrait of that person. Typically, it's just a little bit too much by default, so I wind up dragging that down maybe to around 25 here. 
all different effects all within portrait mode and that only happens in the edit if you choose portrait mode as you're capturing that image. All right, so now let's actually edit the photo the way I like best. I'm gonna go all the way back here and I do think Studio Light tends to give me the most natural looking results. So I'm gonna choose Studio Light. Now I'm gonna drag this all the way down to maybe about halfway, usually around 20 or 25 will do it. Let's just say 20. So we want it to be subtle. We don't want it to be obvious. And I actually really like the result here. Take a look at our before and our after. It's just adding a little bit more light to where we want people to look. So now that we have these adjustments dialed in for portrait mode, we also just want to dial in the adjustments for the photo as a whole, because I really think that we can take this photo and make it even better. So we're going to click on our adjustment icon right next to the portrait mode icon. And I'm going to click the auto. This is what I always do because it gives me the best foundation. And watch what happens when I do. It's too bright, right? I know right away it's too bright. So what I'm going to do is drag to the left a little bit, automatically adjusting all these sliders and giving more color in her face, bringing that exposure back down. And I think right around here is looking perfect. Now lastly, there's one more thing I wanna do. And I do this on almost all the portraits that I take, which is to use a vignette tool. And this is so important because it takes this concept of focusing the light, focusing where we want the viewer to look in our photo, and takes it even a step further by eliminating any light in the edges of the frame and really keeping the viewer's eyes and attention to exactly where we want them to look, which is that person's face. So I'm gonna go all the way to the right here until I see vignette. That's that very last option. And now I'm just gonna drag, not necessarily all the way, but I'll go about 50% here. I think that's, that's pretty good. And if I toggle this on and off by clicking on the wheel, you'll see the effect that that has. It's subtle, but that's the point. You shouldn't notice it until it's removed. So look at that, all of these adjustments, right? The portrait mode, the studio lighting, concentrating light on the subject, throwing the background out of focus, and then adding a vignette. Each one of those on top of each other does more and more to serve one singular purpose, which is to identify my subject and make that subject stand out. That's how you create a more impactful photo, utilizing portrait mode and all the other tools that we have at our disposal inside of the Photos app. This video was a free preview of the iPhone Editing Academy online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to edit your photos to perfection using the device that's always in your pocket. Whether you want to breathe new life into your old images or make your best photos even better, you'll find out exactly how to do that on your iPhone. I'll show you the latest photo editing tricks that will transform even average photos into stunning masterpieces in just a few minutes. So if you'd like to learn more about creating incredible photo edits on your iPhone, please take a look at the full version of my iPhone Editing Academy course. You'll find the link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link now and I'll see you inside the full version of this course.